Welcome back. We'll be looking at an atom that emits a photon today. We'll be given its uh, initial state, its final state, uh, and the wavelength of the photon, and we'll be asked to calculate the energy of the photon. So let's take a look at the specifics of our problem. We have, as I said, an atom, and the, a photon is emitted. The wavelength of the photon is 330 nanometers and it, uh, the initial state is going to be shown as well as the final state. Uh, we want to calculate the energy to two significant figures. And in, in this first, you see the, uh, the final state at negative 4.7 electron volts. So let's uh, go ahead and attack the, the photon part. We say, when you have light that has a wavelength, we can use the standard wave function. So let's go ahead and put this down and we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, some books won't use W, but the one we're using right now does. So if, it, if it's not W, if it's something else, don't worry about it. It's, it's the, same, the same formula. We know Planck's constant. Uh, we know the frequency right there. Uh, and we also know that uh, we can replace the frequency with the speed of light divided by lambda. So that's, that's what I've put in here. So let's go ahead and do that. We know a few things now. We know Planck, and I've, I've done them color-coded so that you can see it. This part is right there. Okay. And as always, if, if it goes too fast for you, just pause and, and read what you need to, look up if you need to. Uh, by now, this should be pretty standard. So this way, the energy is in joules. Uh, we've started off in the initial problem with electron volts, and either one is actually fine because they're both energy. But in this particular one, we started off with electron volts, so let's convert what we have into electron volts as well. Electron volts is also very convenient when dealing with single photon events or uh, things of that nature. Um, because when, when you're dealing with such a small amount of energy, it, it can be inconvenient to use joules. But it, it, both are valid, it's just different things for, for different times. So you remember that when you have joules, it's real easy to convert to the other one if you just use this conversion factor down here. And by now, this should also be rather simple. So, so we take the energy that we have, and we just divide by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, and then that converts it into the electron volts. So now, now that we have this, let's take a look at our diagram again. And we know that when an atom that is excited, it, it has energy, and it emits a photon, the photon has energy, and it carries that energy away. So whatever state the atom started out with, we'll call that the initial state, energy leaves the atom in form of a photon, and you end up with the final state. In this case, the final state. Uh, this atom still is um, a bit excited, and it, it could emit another photon, but that's a problem for a, a different day. At this point, we simply say, OK, we know we started right there, because, or I'm sorry, that we ended right there, because the, the problem said that that's where it ended. And, and so when, when we look at the, the start level, it just has to be the difference in energy. And that's the energy that we calculated. That's the energy that the photon carries away with it. So it had to be, that energy had to be a part of the atom before it emitted it. So it's really quite simple. If, if we know that we end up here and that the atom uh, earlier contained the equivalent amount of energy that the photon gave up, then of course we have to go up to this level. And, and since we're dealing with electron volts, it's, it's a real simple operation to just put the two together 
and then you end up with this. So that was the energy state that the atom had. So it's really quite simple. There, there really wasn't much to this problem. It, just a, a question of, all right, what do we know? We have a beginning state, a final state. The energy that the atom emits is the photon. The photon can be easily calculated into the electron volts. And the only tricky thing is just remembering that this scale looks in the beginning a little funny because you think, but wait a second, negative energy here and the, the negative gets bigger as we go down to the ground state. In the beginning, that can be a little disconcerting. I understand that, you, but you do have to get used to it. This is the way it's done. Uh, the, the lowest energy level is going to be uh, the absolute ground level for the atom is going to be down here and there's no way around that and it's negative so it's the it's the scale they chose to use but then on the other hand when you say okay if like in our example we had a uh, a level after an emission and that in in our case was right here then of course the photon had to make up the difference so it's just you just have to get used to the inverted scale here so don't let it bother you too much all right see you next time